Caching can make your application more robust and run faster every day. In this episode, learn how Fusion Cache is making caching easy for things like Azure SQL Database and how it's also won an award. This week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, we have a very special guest joining us, Jody, who is actually the creator and owner of Fusion Cash. Jody, thanks so much for joining us today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what you do and Fusion Cash? Uh, yeah, hi, Anna. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, yeah, I'm Jody, and I am a coder and an architect for like 26 years already. So a bit, of, a little bit of time. And Fusion Cache is my first open source project that is born out of the needs that I encountered along my career by working with all different kinds of caching. Uh, so like local cache, distributed cache, CDNs, HTTP cache, stuff like that. So I tried to help the community that was the idea by bringing some of these experiences into a cohesive product and to release it into the open. Awesome. That's pretty exciting um, and definitely cool to have creator owner on the show. So we're so glad that you're joining us uh, today. Um, for you. folks who might not be familiar with, you know, why caching is important or what Fusion Cache is, I'd love if you could take us through like, hey, this is what it does and these are the benefits and this is why you should care. And especially as it relates maybe to people using things like Azure SQL Database, although I know it supports, you know, any database, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It supports any kind of data access technology, and in general, caching is what make, for example, the web possible. The web sits on top of the HTTP GET verb, and that is cacheable by default. So, without caching, the web will not exist as we know it today. Apart from that, uh, people mostly mm, tend to introduce caching into their applications uh, to speed up a little bit things because it's a way to have the data sit. Uh, near the, the code that is executing our own code. So when we do that, we have pros and cons by using typically the memory cache that sits only in the memory of the application. And Fusion Cache tries to bring something to the table and in a hopefully cohesive way to let the user benefit from having an, an optional distributed second layer and some advanced features that I think are the most interesting ones. So I prepared a little slides, so maybe cool. I can go for it. Yeah. yeah, let's take a look and learn some more. Yeah, as I said, it's, uh, it tries to be a he very easy to use. If you know how to use a caching as a whole, like memorycaching.net, basically you already know how to use Fusion Cache for the most used uh, scenarios. Um, it's uh, quite robust and fast. I optimized it a little bit uh, along the, the year. And um, it has an optional distributed signal layer and some advanced feature. but the, the thing is, okay, but how does it work? Well, as I said, conceptually, it's just a cache. So imagine if you're using memory cache, you're good to go. But inside of it, there's a, there can be more things like the first level, which, which is the memory cache, which is very, very fast because it sits inside the memory of the application. And it is um, always there because it does not depend on the network. And it's, uh, it's very fast. On the other hand, sometimes you may want to have a distributed cache on top of your memory cache. Why is that? Because even though it is fast, but not as fast as a memory cache, because it's out of process typically on another machine, like think an instance of Redis or memcached or MongoDB or whatever, uh, it has the, con the, the pro of being, again, out of process. That means that for each application start or restart, uh, you will not have your cache wiped out which is what happens with a normal memory cache. Uh, and at the same time, if you are in a multi-node scenario, you have a lot of nodes that have their own local memory cache plus the distributed cache that is a shared state that all can use. But sometimes you may have synchronization issues like uh, what is inside of each memory cache in each node. Uh, with the backplane, which is a, the latest addition that I've made to Fusion Cache, there's an automatic communication between all the nodes and to, to have everything synchronized perfectly. But let's go one step at a time. Um, in general, the benefits that you can get with caching and in, with Fusion Cache in particular, I hope, is that you will get better performance from your app and your services. 
it would be more robust to things like the database going down a little bit or being slow or stuff like that. Network uh, issues like high latency for some time, think like Black Friday or stuff like that. And you also have, you can also have some benefits regarding SEO, search engine optimization, uh, if you're using that on a website and we'll see later how. Uh, in general, another thing is that it can help you deal with uh, things when they go south, like uh, again, uh, database going down for a moment or stuff like that. Uh, what are the main features of, of Fusion Cache? Well, the first is probably the most interesting is the cache stampede prevention. Cache stampede is a known problem in the caching space that happens when, let's say you have a thousand requests coming in for a product one, two, three, like in the example on the screen, and without any particular care about how to execute those calls, all of those thousand requests will go to the cache, will not find the data, or will go to the database, get back the data, save it to the cache, and then go on. And that is a waste of time and resources, think CPU and memory, because why go to the database a thousand times or even just check the cache a thousand times at the same moment for the same data? It's a waste. So what we can do with Fusion Cache, it has uh, basically the main method of Fusion Cache is get or set, which is an op a method uh, that lets you optimize the way to check and go to the database for data. Uh, it is um, using some forms of locks and it allows to be to have a guarantee that only one of those requests will do the trips to the database and whatnot and the others will automatically use the data uh, that get back from the database talking with members of the community even just swapping the memory cache uh, of .NET with fusion cache they told me they observed something like 40 to 60 percent less calls to the database in wow. a typically high traffic website yeah so and the cool thing is that you just swap it out and it works. So you don't have to do anything in particular. Um, just a quick note, the memory cache of .NET has a method called get or create, which is uh, kind of similar in the shape in the API surface to get or set and fusion cache. But what most people do not realize until it's too late is that it is not optimized for that kind of concurrent access. So keep that in mind and look out for that. The second main feature is a fail safe. Um, and that is a feature that basically tells you, tells Fusion Cache, hey, cache something for five minutes, for example, or two minutes, like in the example, but when it, the data expires, go to the database to get the new piece of data. But if something bad happens, like the database is down, uh, use, you can reuse the old version for a little bit more time. Usually with a normal cache that does not have fail safe mechanism, uh, what happens is that when the data is expired, it is gone for good. It's it's over. So the only thing you can do in front of um, an error from the database is that you can only bubble up the error to the user. And from an end user perspective, that's not really the best thing. And in, on top of that, if you consider that you've cached something for two minutes, is it really that bad to reuse that data for two minutes and 10 seconds, 30 seconds maybe? Probably not. Most of the times it is not. So um, failsafe does that. If you enable it, and you can enable every one of the options that we will see, both globally, like a default, and per single call, so you can have a very granular way to um, to configure Fusion Cache and its usage. Uh, you can uh, you can say, hey, if something bad happens while you refresh your data, just use the old one for a little bit more. And you can configure for how much time that data will be reused and then check again the database. And up until uh, how much time at all uh, completely you can reuse some data that is stale. So you can have that kind of control. Also, the title is, a, is an homage to a 60s movie by Sidney Lumet, which I consider, I suggest everyone to look at because it's very beautiful. Another interesting thing is that sometimes, well, a lot of times the real world is not just on and off. It's not like black and white. It's, it's a shed of grays, okay? So the database is not always there and it's not um, completely unreachable. Sometimes it's just slow. Why? Because maybe you have a queries that typically take five, 10 milliseconds, but maybe you are in Black Friday or stuff like that, and it is a little bit overload. Um, in that moment, uh, you will not have a query fa that fails, but you will have a query that maybe takes more time than usual. So in that regard, with software timeouts timeout management that Fusion Cache provides, 
you can say something like, hey, if the query is taking more than, I don't know, 100 milliseconds, like in the example, just reuse temporarily the old value. That means that it is basically the same as before, but as I said before, in fail safe, but with a difference then that here the query is not failed. So it can go in the background. And that is when uh, what I said um, below with background factory completion, the query will, will be put in the background, it will go on. And when the data will go back, uh, we, can, we came back to the database, it will automatically update the cache. So you can get basically the best of both worlds. You can have fresh data as soon as possible, but very fast response times just by, just by using a piece of data that's, that's old, but maybe, may, maybe not that old. Uh, here is when it kicks in the SEO optimization that I talked about before, because with Google, for example, we have Core Web Vitals, which are a set of metrics that Google uses to see how our pages are good or bad based on um, related to SEO ranking. And two, two web, vital, web vitals in particular are time to first byte and largest contentful pain. Those are basically based on top of um, the response time. So by using uh, smart timeouts, we can be sure to always have uh, very fast response times while keeping the data fresh because it will be automatically updated as soon as possible. Um, another option in, to consider is the second level cache. This is totally optional. You can use Fusion Cache as a normal memory cache with the feature that I highlighted as up to now. Uh, but you can also add an additional second layer. Um, that is uh, any implementation of the common ID distributed cache interface from the .NET BCL. That means that there are a ton of them available already for you to choose. There's Redis, Memcache, SQL Server, Cosmos DB, MongoDB, and they are all implementation of a distributed cache on top of those technologies. You simply say to Fusion Cache at the beginning, so it's one extra line in the initialization phase, use this additional cache. And that's all. And you don't have to do anything else in the rest of the code. Uh, another thing that you have to tell uh, Fusion Cache is, what serializer to use. I've already implemented a couple for the community based on JSON, but you can implement your own and pick another one. Uh, that's because the lingua franca for distributed caches is byte arrays because they do not uh, work with object instances. So that is why it is needed. Uh, when we do that, and then it's the, the last main features, uh, so, um, something that may happen is a problem of synchronization. What do I mean? Uh, imagine you are in a scenario with uh, 10 nodes. Each node will have its own local memory cache. Uh, so it will get automatically populated and they will all talk with the, the distributed cache, which is a shared state automatically. But if you put something in the cache for five minutes and the first minute after the first, the first minute, the data changes through another node, that node will have the data updated. Well, but the other nodes that have the data in their local cache will not be uh, will be out of sync because they don't know that they, the update happened. The backplane is uh, basically a message bus, very simple message bus that sends and receives messages and is again automatically managed by Fusion Cache. You don't have to do anything. It's multi-provider, and it basically what it does is it sends and receives messages to say, "Hey, other nodes, this piece of data is changed. Do your thing." So that is a way for the cache as a whole to be completely synchronized for free. Currently, I've made two implementations, one based in memory, and that is mostly used by uh, testing and stuff like that. And the other is the real production one is based on Redis, because Redis uh, as a technology, as an, um, an internal mechanism, pub sub mechanism, that I use to send and receive messages. Uh, one final slide, and then I'm done. Other small features, but I think they are important to consider. Uh, the library, Fusion Cache, is licensed under MIT, which is very permissive, and you can do basically whatever you want with it. It targets .NET, .NET standard 2.0, which means, roughly speaking, that it runs everywhere on every .NET version, both the old .NET framework and the new core, the new one, 6.7. I already tested it on, set, on the 7 one. That is not out yet, and it works uh, very well. The entire API is both uh, available as a sync and async version because sometimes you can use one, sometimes you can use the other, and it's fully available, and it's not implemented only as one and the other is on top of, so it's like fake. It's fully implemented in both ways. All the options that you can set are available as both a global, let's call it them a default, and then you can granularly uh, change some of those options per call, so you have full control over that. It natively supports dependency injection, which is 
very cool in today's uh, internet world. It supports cancellation via cancellation tokens. It, again, important to maintain high stability of your system. It has documentation in the main repo on GitHub. And it is fully documented via XML comments, which basically means that when you code, when you are coding, you will have help uh, while you write your piece of code uh, via IntelliSense or similar technologies. Uh, it supports logging via the standard iLogger interface, and it has a set of events, both high level and lower level, to know what what is happening inside of Fusion Cache. We want to peek into that, and it's a little bit extensible via plugin system. Thank you. And awesome. Thanks so much, Jody. This has been super useful. I've personally learned a lot. I think our viewers probably have too. I have just a couple quick questions. One mm -hmm. thing I noticed is that uh, Fusion Cache is not yet at a version 1.0. Does this mean that, you know, this isn't really ready for anything in production and it, you're kind of just getting started? Or what do you think about that? No, that is just me being extra cautious because that is this is my very first uh, open source project. Uh, it took some time for me to finally be able to say, okay, I have something to contribute back to the community, which I have used for a lot of my career as uh, almost everybody. So it's just me being extra cautious. But I didn't say that. Uh, it is already being used in production by a lot of people around the world and projects that I work on too. And I'm talking about millions and millions of page views per day on each project. Uh, so, and it's helping me even sustain some uh, DDoS attacks and stuff like that because of the way it is, uh, it makes the application more robust. So no, no, definitely it's production ready. Wow, that's awesome. That's great to hear. And then um, one other question is, you know, if you're uh, watching the show, a lot of our viewers are, you know, running on Azure, running SQL Server, running Azure SQL Database, Cosmos DB, et cetera. Um, do you have any tips and tricks for folks as they're working with databases and getting started with Fusion Cache? Yeah, the... If they are already, well, if they are not already using any sort of caching, I would suggest them to take a look at that and even just start with the normal memory caching.net. This is a great starting point and it can save you a lot of time in production for, um, because most of the times, uh, even though it depends from in the specific context, most of the times a lot of systems um, reuse the same data, they handle the same data in a small amount of time. And even if it is for a couple of seconds, for example, uh, something that's commonly known as micro-caching, it will be a lot better for your system. So please take a look at that. If you are using a cache, then you may take a look at Fusion Cache and even just swapping out memory cache with Fusion Cache, you already have cache stampede prevention that I talked about before. And that is already a lifesaver because again, 40 to 60% less call to the database. And then I have to say that in my experience, uh, even though I say so myself, uh, it's saving me a lot of times when things went south with the database maybe having a couple of issues temporarily, maybe the connection was not so stable or some topology changes in the network or stuff like that. In general, knowing that when some small things go bad, you have your situation under control automatically, that's a really, really nice saving. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks so much, Jody, for coming on and explaining how Fusion Cache works, how to get started, all that sorts of stuff. Uh, to our viewers, we're going to include some links in the description where you can go learn more, see some samples, read a blog, uh, and all that sort of good stuff. So if you like this episode, go ahead and give it a like, leave us a comment, and let us know what you think of Fusion Cache. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.